As the bleakness of winter fades and the colors of spring hit full bloom, so does life in the SEC. 110 pitches through seven. One hit allowed, but what a day for the freshman Doug Nikhazy. His first SEC weekend start is a gym. Kessinger gives it a ride. Deep left field. This ball's off the wall. It'll produce a run. And Ole Miss takes a 4-3 lead on an RBI double from Greg Kessinger. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on one tailing away, and the Rebels win 10-5. What a job by Myers. With the Rebels riding high off a series win in Fayetteville, the red and blue welcome a visit from another 2018 College World Series team. What do you like better, turkey hunting or duck hunting? Turkey. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Turkey hunting's more challenging. If you mess up, then, then they're getting close and most of the time they're gone, so. I look at turkey hunting like baseball game, like, like a batter facing a pitcher or, or, you know, you being a closer. You come in and the game's on the line, it's one-on-one, -on -one. you can't afford to mess up, you can't afford to throw a pitch down the middle. This is the ultimate challenge right here, is, is it's the competitive nature that baseball players have. Yeah. It comes out in, in turkey hunting. I've never really thought about it like that. Well, don't think about it, just, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just do it. So, spot that Parker knew that the turkeys were at. We were headed that way, and the turkeys gobbled within 20 yards of where we parked the pickup truck. <laughs> so we had to come all the way back here, and we got them to gobble. There's more than one gobbler, so we think there's two, maybe three. But right now they got girlfriends with them, and their girlfriends took them on the other side. So you're gonna see, we're gonna walk right by the truck to try to get to the turkeys. So this is where we heard them. And these trees right here, we don't know if they didn't cross because of the truck or if they went just on the other side. We're gonna try to locate them. back to the truck where we heard the turkeys gobbling last and there is a creek that is separating us from the turkeys. Maybe I should say it's a river because it's about 12 foot deep <laughs> and although we're pretty hardcore we both agreed the water is way too cold this morning to chance it. So we walked up a little bit to look and see if, if the turkeys were in a field and uh, there's actually water in the field. Come on, one answer. And he 
ain't looking good. Mm -mm. And the wind's picking up. There's a bald eagle right there. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is what you don't get in a city, people. We're winning the space one, man. <laughs> the thing about the outdoors and hunting, this is what everybody needs to understand. It ain't about killing. It's about coming out, having fellowship, sharing something in common, and enjoying the beautiful nature and landscape. And, and here we are, we got what we came here for. It ain't, it ain't, it's about peace of mind coming out, hanging out. We're not done yet, we still gotta walk back to the truck, you never know. Heading back in here to Oxford Elementary School, check out the school I went to and get back to the community a little bit and read to the kids. I remember being that kid looking up and uh, in, the, in the stands and you know thinking of what I thought about the Ole Miss players and I just think it's such a great opportunity to um, give back and show some love to the kids. Hey guys, how are we today? What's going on? Where do they go on game day? The story of the squirrels who live in the grove. I'll go to the football game sometimes in the grove. Have y'all ever seen the squirrels? No. All right, we're gonna read turkey trick or treat today. It's getting close to Halloween, isn't it? Who's going, who's going trick or treating? There's a grove of magnolia, oak, and elm trees, all tall and leafy, tucked away in a, town, in a tiny town called Oxford. People from all over come to the Grove in their fancy clothes, excited to watch the game. Edna gave out treats, the animals all stared. Oh, how they loved treats. See the cow with his tongue out, he wants he want some candy. Do you think the Rebs won the game? Yeah, of course they did. One, two, three, hotty toddy! <laughs> Thanks guys. It's Greg Kessinger. That's my, that's my best friend, guys. We're about to go to recess, so. How about to go to recess? I wish I could go to recess. I know, right? I have class. <laughs> oh, wow. We found this. This is great timing. Yeah. How'd that go? It went great. Yeah, it did. I think it's, it's a blast for us just as much as it is for them. Ain't that right? Yeah. Just got done reading Oxford Elementary. Uh, it was a good time, but now it's uh, time for us to get to class, so. The Oxford boys, they're, they're the Oxford boys. I mean, they're just a bunch of uh, dirt bags. You know, they play really hard. Uh, they all have their special talents. It's a uh, have fun every day, but they're guys who show up and they work hard. It's weird, it's like a superhero, you know, like they come together and make one like really awesome, like well-oiled machine. You know, you got the competitive pitcher, Houston Roth. Kicks delivers. Ground ball, first base side, Zabowski. Fires to second, now back to first to Roth, and for the catch in the out, Houston Roth battles to get to first base, there to take it. And then you got uh, Thomas Dillard, who, who just hits absolute tanks. Runners don't go, fly ball to right. Way gone. And Ole Miss is back on top. And then Gray, who's also a really good hitter, different style hitter, you know, he can Hit it to all fields, and uh, he does have some juice, but I mean, defensively, he's just unbelievable. One two pitch, grounded slowly. Kessinger, bare hand, throws on the run. Are you kidding? What a play! All the plays that he makes are just, you know, he makes a play and you're like, oh, that's just great. But realistically, there's not many shortstops in the country that can go out there and do what he does. Uh, you know, he has that signature slide and play that he makes in the hole. I've seen it over a hundred times, him do it, and people say like, oh, sports in the top ten when he does it, and it's literally like him catching a, a straight up ground ball for me, you know, he does that all the time. Cox, first pitch swinging, Kessinger in the hole, the throw is in time. Boy, great Kessinger makes it look easy at shortstop, but that was anything but an easy play. Normal shortstops don't make that play, you don't get that out, that's a single, but uh, Gray in the field is... You know, he's the best shortstop in the country. Franklin rolls one up the middle. Nice play by Kessinger. And the throw is scooped by Graham at first. Great Kessinger, a nice play. 
Yeah, Kessinger is a guy. He, he's a big league shortstop when it comes to defensively. Tyler, he doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. It's him. So talk. Let him know where to throw it. Let's go! That a boy! Great job, Zebo. That a boy! Nobody better, six. Nobody better. Whew. Tom's about to do something. Tom's about to do something. He's gonna make this. Uh, he's gonna make this interesting. Thomas Dillard can make things more than interesting. He's a pitcher's worst nightmare. Swung on, fly ball, right field, well stroke. Kiss that one, goodbye. Two run homer, Thomas Dillard. He didn't miss that one, and the Rebels go back on top. Deep fly ball to right field, Thomas Dillard. And he'll walk it off with a shot to right center field. Thomas, you know, as a hitter, just, I don't know how you get him out. You know, he does everything well. He doesn't strike out much. He takes his walks. He hits the ball country mile. Three pitches to each batter is impressive. This one written deep to center field. Estes to the track, to the wall. It is gone. Two-run shot, Thomas Dillard. He can change the game by himself. Uh, he's, he's just that good. Teller and pitch. Swung on, and it is going to go way out of here. Thomas Dillard, his second home run of the day, and the Rebels have the lead. It's an eight RBI day for Thomas Dillard. 12 11 Rebels. Yeah, he can just do it all. Just an absolute great hitter, both sides of the plate. It wouldn't take long for those outside of Oxford to take note of Dillard's power, leading to his selection to the 2018 College Home Run Derby. It's going to be fun, you know, the goals hit a lot of home runs. You know, this, just this experience is going to be worth it, no matter how it turns out. There's a lot of, a lot of great guys here uh, from all around the country, so just looking to have fun with them. Look at this guy. He's a stud. He's going to hit a lot of home runs. All right, I'm going to stop. Hey, what up? What up? Oh, now you are. You're so cool. Let's get it. Flip your hair. Flip your hair. I'm good. That was awesome. Didn't you like? Get it right center. He was really hanging back there for a little bit, but he's got some rhythm and some direction, and those balls are scorched. That's four in a row. Make that five. He had five in a row before his timeout. What? boy. Dilly dilly, they like to call him back in Oxford. Do it, dilly dilly. Finish strong. Kind of ugly, but we got it. It's really cool to be able to do that with uh, the Ole Miss across your chest. You know, I've told people that home run derby might have been one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to go to. To experience that with my parents and Coach Clement was just a, a crazy thing. You know, uh, it's crazy how many people in Omaha, Nebraska know what Ole Miss is and, and what Hotty Toddy is. While Kessinger and Dillard patrol the diamond, Houston Roth steps to the rubber when the lights shine brightest. 2-2. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Got that one up to 90. You know, Houston's just a competitor out there. Uh, he has a lot, of, a lot of really good pitches that he can throw in the zone. He's always in the zone. That's one of the things that I've always admired about him. You know, he can always throw his pitches for strikes. Houston on the mound just competes. You know, he's just a bulldog, and um, he's always been that way. He throws the ball where he wants it. Strike three called inside corner. Rodriguez goes away looking. Boom's caught looking. Jordan tied up. Fourth strikeout for Houston Rod. Someone tells me five, six years ago, I'm starting the SEC championship game. I uh, would not believe it. I mean, unbelievable for this team. I mean, it's a team effort all the way through. And a pitch. Swing and a miss! He struck him out! The Rebels will go to the championship game tomorrow! Oh my 
goodness. Houston Raw, the Oxford High School Charger, who had a phenomenal high school career and doing a pretty good job in Division One. Big smile on his face. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of good crowds here at Swayze in my time, and uh, that may have been the best crowd that we've ha ever had. For me to be the guy out there to make the bid pitch, to get the out, uh, you know, to win the game and see the stands erupt, I mean, that was that was awesome. Houston, you grew up in Oxford, Ole Miss fan. I mean, how cool a moment, not only to get a chance to pitch, but in this environment, this setting, just, just how cool. Right, I was talking to James MacArthur uh, the first day, you know, our first uh, game, uh, and I'm up here down the line, and I'm just looking around smiling. He's like, what are you, what are you so happy about? And I said, you know, because I remember coming to these uh, regional games when I was a kid, and I remember being that kid on the side looking at these players and, like, what, what a you know, great opportunity you guys blessed me with. For young ball players growing up in Oxford, there's no question where their heroes reside. It's so much fun. All the, all the kids coming up here and you know, everyone looks straight up to you. It's really cool because uh, not too long ago I was one of those. So it's uh, cool to get back to that. Just growing up around here and uh, you know, seeing the history, is just it makes you want to be a part of it. You know, growing up coming to games and seeing the guys that have played before you and what they meant to you and knowing that that's what you can be for the little kids that come to the game. You know, it's, that's one of those things that makes you want to play the game the right way. You know, every day you want to come out, you want to play hard, you want to have fun because that's what I remember about the guys that I watch. Specifically, Zach Cozart was the one guy that you know, I remember always wanting to be like. Matt Snyder's come back and uh, hung out with us a little bit. Matt Snyder was one of my favorite players ever at Ole Miss, watching him swing it. Watching them back in the day was just, you know, guys that I wanted to be like and, you know, the feeling that I had, uh, knowing that I can be that kind of uh, you know, leader for a little kid, maybe be an example for that, is just something that's unmatched for me. The way that uh, you looked up to them, it, it's so cool knowing that some kids are, you know, are looking up to you in the same way, and it, um, it's, it's really awesome. The joy of getting to put on that jersey, go out there and play in front of these fans, just competing in the SEC versus some of the best players, you know, it's one of those things that you can never take for granted or never get too much of. You know, for me, Ole Miss is home. It's just a place that I knew, you know, forever that this is this is home for me, and uh, it's home for me. It's can't put in words. It's just a place that, um, if you're here, then you get it. You know, we just got to cherish the moments we have while we have it, and you know, really enjoy Swayze and all the fans while we while we still got it. This is my hometown. This is where I was born. This is where I grew up, and you know, I don't want to leave this place. I love Oxford. All right, University of Florida, they're starting some young guys in their lineup, and so that's the difference. The difference is uh, we've done it before, okay? It's never easy. It's never smooth. It's never pretty, okay? Uh, you you got to get, you got to handle it. And the good teams and the older teams and the veteran teams and the experienced teams know that. There's guys sitting in this room that didn't have success but grinded through, worked it, worked it out, and have had success. There's guys in this room that lost bad games. It toughens you, it weathers you, and that's what you have to understand. And so tonight, it's just another opportunity, one of 30 that you get. So tonight, be present, you know, stay in the moment, keep pounding the stone. Friday nights in the SEC are an event, and for a tilt with perennial power Florida, Swayze, set the perfect stage. Rebel fans getting behind Will Etheridge. He's trying to avoid two leadoff walks. Two down, runners at second and third. The one-two to Brady McConnell. And he delivers. And it's a line drive into right field, a 92 fastball. So Florida takes a two to nothing lead here in the top of the third. With the Gators out in front, a storm awaited them in the bottom half of the third. I think we had five hits through the first two innings, so we had opportunities, and I knew that we were swinging the bat and, and taking pretty good at bats. So many times they would uh, punch us in the mouth, we'd punch them back. Tyler Keenan's the batteries one for one. From the stretch, Mace delivers, and that's hit to left field. Pretty well stroke, Langworthy going back. It's at the wall, and it is gone! Let's go! Two-run homer for Keenan. We got showers in right. Come on! Come on! Let's go, baby! Let's go!
he's been really patient at the plate, and it's turning into him getting more pitches that he can handle and he can, you know, hit really far. He knows exactly what he's looking for when he goes up there, and if he gets it on the first pitch, he's going to go after it. And Ole Miss, hitting's contagious. Swings and lifts this one high in the air, left field, drifting back is Langworthy, still drifting back. He's at the wall, he jumps up, it's gone! That ball just kept going, and Zabowski lobs one over the left field wall, and the Rebels take a 3-2 lead. In the game of baseball, even when things are going well, you're always one twist from danger. Kendrick popped one up his first time. This time he grounds to Graham, but Etheridge comes up limping after covering the bag. And that is not good news for Ole Miss. Your ankle or your knee? Run foot right there. I felt a pop. All right, let's let's walk a little bit and see if we're we're all right to throw. But walk, walk with you know what I'm saying. Walk a little bit to get the blood going. Well, Will's going to pitch though. Two down with the runner at first. See if Langworthy tries to go. It's going to hit him just barely. I think this is going to be it for Will Etheridge. We're going to bring him in. All right, but I'm going to let it, let him give me a few seconds so he can warm up. All right, okay. and then yeah, let's let's take take care of it and get you back out here. All right. All right. Tyler Myers, right-hander, coming in here in a tough situation. Runners at first and second, two down. Rebels leading by one. Unfortunately, Will Etheridge, who's pitching pretty good, is going to have to leave. Kind of a tough spot to inherit here, uh, Keith, with short notice. I do think he's had ample time to get warmed up. So obviously, mentally, he certainly wasn't prepared to go in this inning, but, you know, sometimes that happens. Two balls, two strikes to the third baseman, Corey Acton. Tying run out at second to pitch. Strike three. Came back with an 88 fastball, froze the hitter, and that ends the inning. But that Tyler Myers answering the call, coming out of the bullpen, dominating this Florida lineup. With Myers rolling on the hill, the focus turned to the potent Rebel Sluggers. Swung on, he hits one in right center gap, maybe trouble. It's down for a base hit. And Clement's going to ask Olenek to score. The throw to the plate is dropped by Smith and Olenek scores. Swung on, line drive, base hit to left. One run will score. Here comes Dillard, he'll come to the plate. He will score, it's a two run, two strike, two out single for Cooper Johnson. Cooper's been great this year, you know, not only behind the dish, but at the plate too. When uh, when he comes to the plate, we know he's gonna produce and uh, get on base and just pass the bat. You know, I think the back half of our lineup is really starting to come through and one of the reasons that we've had so much success over the last couple weeks. Swung on, fly ball, left field, Langworthy. You can kiss that one goodbye. Three-run jack for Cooper Johnson, his fourth of the year. And the Rebels are up 12-4. to Hey, listen, you know, congratulations. I say, you know, all the time I want you to enjoy it. But I want you to enjoy it, and I want you to think about this. You were good tonight. I mean, you were really good, all right? And you can be really good. Right, this, this can be more of us, right? We can do this more often. We can bring this type of game. We may not always get 17 hits and 12 runs and you know, have you know, outstanding relief and starting pitching and all that, but we can compete like this and play with this kind of energy. See, we can bring it every single day, right? Every single day, and that's us, because you got to do it in this league. They're going to punch back tomorrow. They're too good, right? They're going to be ready. Tomorrow's a huge day for us, so enjoy this tonight. Get some rest, because tomorrow's a huge day. We want to come out ready to play. Nice job. Coop said it back there. He said, that's us. You know, that's us. That's how we play. We can hit. Uh, we can pitch. We can do it all. And uh, it showed tonight. But uh, still have three more ga- or two more games, so stay hungry. Don't get complacent. Uh, we're going after it tomorrow. Fireworks during the game. Fireworks after the game. What more could you want? With a long night at the park in the books, the Rebels return to Swayze, knowing the key to a successful doubleheader is coffee in large doses. Getting a nice spread. Hopefully there's a casserole. The sausage sausage egg casserole is solid. I really just want coffee. That too. Get the caffeine levels up. 
we're gonna we're gonna drink it dark, but I'm gonna need a little bigger cup than this. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> this thing is tiny, but we'll take what we can get. I'm gonna shoot for four of these in total. I don't know how many ounces those are. So eight cups. Eight cups of coffee. I am exhausted. About a one to one ratio type guy. A lot of creamer, a little bit of coffee. Makes it taste good. Dude, no way. Connor, how much coffee are we gonna need today? None. Kidding me? SEC weekend? I am drinking some right now, so I guess we need a little bit, but Florida will get us jacked up. Connor's the guy that has to show up 30 minutes early and drink like four cups of coffee before anyone else gets here just so he, nobody sees how tired and how not ready he is. And then he'll, you know, tell everyone how great he is because he was here 30 minutes early, so it's a bunch of hoopla. What does that mean for you? I don't need coffee to get energized, okay? I'm energized on life. I always have juice. Much like breakfast is the most important meal of the day, Mike Bianco knows the key to being successful in the SEC starts on the mound. And freshman Doug Nikhazy has provided the juice each time he stepped up on the hill. Hey, listen, I'm going to say this before I walk out. Be yourself today, right? I know you're from Florida and you're pitching against Florida and all of that. How you're successful is you're just Doug Nikhazy, right? You don't have to throw at 96 today. You just got to be yourself and make pitches, right? Down in the zone, just a good mix, just like you saw last night. The guys that seem to win a lot of baseball games, you know, the teams score more runs for them. They play better defense, and it's not because they do it consciously. I think they do it subconsciously because they're relaxed. They know that this guy is going to you know, have a good outing for them. And, uh, you know, Doug's starting to certainly have that feeling about him. He's a young man that began the year in the bullpen and then got some big midweek starts against ECU, one against Louisville, pitched well, put him into the weekend rotation just a couple of weekends ago and he has not looked back. He acts like a seasoned vet, you know, guy that's been pitching on the weekends for a couple years now. Strike two, one ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss, struck him out on a 91 fastball. Kind of get through that first inning and then I kind of see that I kind of have my feet underneath me and then from there it's just all a process of getting in a rhythm and then rolling through the rest of it. Swing and a miss, struck him out on a back foot curveball. Second strikeout for Nick Casey. Ole Miss leading 5-1 to one in the fifth. Here's the full count pitch again to Duran. Swing and a miss. Struck him out on an 89 fastball away. Nikhazy wins the battle. A little fist pump after. Did you see him? A little fist pump there. I mean, this is a Floridian pitch against the almighty Gators. You know this has got to be part of his little makeup today. At one point, tip my cat to one of my good friends, Brady McConnell, who I grew up playing with in summer baseball. So it's always running through your head, but um, it's it never um, influences the way you pitch. You always just try to be the same person that, that I did to get myself here and then just always throw one pitch at a time. As it was set up away, again the one, two. Tied him up, swing and a miss, strike three. One ball, two strikes to Young to pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out on an 89 fastball. Keith elevated a hair, Doug Nick Casey. And he delivers. Strike three, there's a paint the corner. And that will end the inning. What a job by Doug Nikhazy. They just kept pumping it in there, didn't he, DK? He sure did. That's it, man. Nice job, man. We're hanging there. As the newcomer tamed the Gator bats, one of the most well-known rebel names was navigating the swamp at the dish. Gray, it's it's a show. Like, every single time he steps out on the field, he's a performer. Great Kessinger. Now 20 games in a row, he has reached base safely in SEC play. Greg Kessinger hitting 342, yeah. while his season average kind of got off to a slow start, just 287. You know, one of those things wasn't the start that I wanted to have, but just trying to stay confident and you know, being aggressive. I didn't want to lose my aggressiveness. Well, infield is in line, drive base hit to left for Kessinger, and he'll get an RBI, and he's got another two-hit game. Uh, man, since SEC play has started, he has just really continued to come on, and um, it's been a huge uh, difference maker in our lineup. The bases are loaded for a red-hot Gray Kessinger. And big moment of the game right here. The Gators want to stay in range. The Rebels get a little separation here with two down, bases full. Great catch, your two for two with two singles. You know, I want to be a guy that's in that spot. Go up there, have a little fun, and uh, put a good swing and see what happens. Tyler Dyson 
delivers the 1-1. Swung on, line drive, left center field. He has done it again. One run scores, two run score. Linick to third, slides in safely, and Kessinger scoops to second. Line drive, base hit to left. When the man is locked in, the man is locked in. He'll try it into second base with a base clearing double, and Gray Kessinger is having a day. 10 to 1, Ole Miss. I'm not sure if I've had a five RBI game or not, but uh, it's definitely fun. It feels good, and especially when your team's winning, uh, it adds a little joy to it. Listen, congratulations, and uh, you know, big day uh, for a lot of people today. You know, uh, Doug was tremendous once again, and then it's all about the offense. We had 20 hits. Uh, or somewhere about that, and uh, a lot of big days, but nothing bigger than Mr. Kesson. The boy, right? When it turns four o'clock, right, it's like waking up the next morning to play another baseball game. You can't just sit there and continue to pat yourself on the back and continue to say, "Oh wow, we, you know, what a what a good weekend." You know, how about you know, want the kiss of death? You want the mediocre um, saying? We at least won two out of three. Right? That's what that's what the average people said. Right? At four o'clock, the champions go, this is an opportunity to sweep. Let's sweep a really good team that's going to beat people down the line, right? So nothing else to do for the next you know four hours but to play really good baseball and finish the weekend. All right? Nice shot. The Rebels had dominated in every facet of the game to start the series. But the Gators' best bite awaited them in game three. Will Dalton hammers it down the third baseline, a base hit for him. Florida will score at least one more run. Now they're gonna really press it and try. Here comes a throw, gonna have a play at the plate. Offline, Gators get a two-run double out of Will Dalton and lead 8 nothing. The weird part about the weekend, and I think it's a product of how well we swung the bats the first two games, is I never felt a ton of panic. You just got to stay calm, you know, stay within yourself, and you can't get all the runs back at once. Just get guys on base, create havoc on the bases, and just continue to pass the bat to the next guy, and things will work out in our favor. I'm Z, I'm Z. Yeah! Zabowski hits a bomb to right field. Forget about that one. But as soon as Zebo hit that home run, that two-run shot over the right field wall, uh, it the game was over right then. <laughs> this ball, base hit, left side. Kessinger with another hit. Well, now you got Keenan, you got Dillard, and you got Zabowski. You know, runners on first and second right now. If any one of those three get a hold of one, you got a ball game then. And look out here. And now we're going to take a break. But it's as simple as lightning within a what eight mile radius of the stadium. I, I just remember when they cleared the field for the rain delay, um, you know, Zebo had hit the two run home run the inning before, and then the first two guys are on base uh, before the rain delay hits. And I just ran into the dugout feeling really good about what was what was happening. I think the big difference is, is knowing that we had momentum going, uh, even though we were down by a lot. Um, we had some momentum going and the important thing is keeping that momentum coming out of the rain delay. After a 61-minute weather delay, we are set to restart baseball at Swayze Field in Oxford, Mississippi. Now Nolan Crisp coming in out of the bullpen, 12th appearance of the year. He's 2-0 with a 2.57 ERA. Coming out for that bat, I was planning to swing on 3-1, but he threw me a ball and I walked. And on a 3-1 pitch, that's where we were when we went into the lightning delay. A walk to Tyler Keenan, and so Ole Miss has the bases loaded with nobody out. We knew we were down, and we we're going to come back regardless. I mean, we're a good offense, and we're going to fight to the end. So it doesn't matter if we're up eight or down eight, we're going to fight. 0-2 down the third baseline. That's a fair ball. Keenan comes around to score. Dillard's being waved around. Zabowski will slam on the brakes at third. A two-run double for Knox LaPasser. 
And this is a one-run game, a game that Florida led 8-0 in. Yeah! 2-2 Two -two from Servideo, lined into the right center field gap. That'll be extra bases for Anthony Servideo. Hits the bag at second, going to try and turn it into a triple. He will do so with a head first slide. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Same thing as before? Like yeah, but, but, yeah but you know, it's a short lead, so you can't get picked and no line drive, can't get doubled off, right? Because you're not going to go, right? Yeah. Unless it's a fly ball. It's just a tiny lead, don't start. I got a tiny lead and they start to walk, right? Short lead, so you don't want the guy to dive over the bag to catch it double you off. Yes, sir. Hits this one in the air to left. Langworthy on the run, and it's over his head. Olenek able to turn all the burners and cruise into second with a stand-up double. Nice job, Ed. In a game where no lead seems safe, the Rebels needed to hit closing time a little early. Go attack him right here, second and third, one out. Let's go, go right at him. Come on. Let's go, man. Now Parker Caracy in to try and settle things down, making his ninth appearance of the year. At that point, you know, we had to go to Caracy, regardless if he could finish the game or not, and probably, you know, uh, felt that he probably wasn't going to finish the game uh, because it would it'd be over three innings. But we needed somebody to put some zeros up, and, you know, he's our best guy to do that. Come on, Park, right here. Let's go. That's what makes Parker Caracy so special. You know about the fastball, but he can bend it, too, and watch the location of that spinner. I mean, just off the outside corner. It looks like a fastball the whole way. You go to get it, and it just disappears. Oh, the first, and yes. this time a pickoff at first base. Oh, just paints the inside corner, 92. And again, the velo start to come back a little bit. One, two. Keenan has to wait back on it. He has to hurry. Makes the throw, and Ole Miss completes the sweep. 57 pitches, three and two-thirds innings. Seventh save of the year for Parker Caracy, and Ole Miss moves to eight and four in the SEC. We are. Let's go. We haven't asked him to do it all year, uh, but three plus innings of uh, you know save work by Mr. Caracy. We're on. All right, check one, two, one, two. They didn't put coffee out. Everyone has coffee, and I'm freaking out right now. That's great. Go to Mexico, and the people go, hey, you want to like Fiji? You want, uh, uh, I want the cheapest water you got. Wow, that is a big wasp. Oh my gosh. I have no idea what I'm saying right now. <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. All right. <laughs> Game's gonna be a little quicker. No more challenges. We gotta win it outright from here on out. Old fashioned way. It's been a pleasure being on the mic today. Thank you. See you next game.